tempos não you're like all like down like i don't know if your computer like moved up or if you're just like i'm in chill mode tonight <laughs> me yes. uh no i i have a logo on my sweatshirt which i thought i'd hide <laughs> nobody's no. watching this that cares <laughs> that's true that's true is it pivot <laughs> no it is not pivot but that would be a good one I swear somebody used that in a message just like a few days ago and I like laughed because mm -hmm. it was Every like, it I feel like it was so blatant. Like they were trying to use it like ironically to me. <laughs> like that's how I took it. I'm like this, I don't feel like this is like their normal speak. So I'm like, this is pretty funny. <laughs> So every time there's the first snowfall, I always think of the scene, which I was just quoting when we started here, from White Christmas, which I watch at least once a year. When they get on the train car to go to Vermont, and they're like, snow, 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 snow. Do <laughs> you not know that, what I'm talking about? Does that come out um, in like the 30s or something? Yes. It <laughs> is from like the 50s. Is it, I think. Is it black and white? No. <laughs> I think they actually there. colored it, you know. <laughs> Irving Berlin, Bing Crosby, Danny Kay. I know so, what you're talking about. I've never seen it, though. Uh, who's the, the Clooney? It's like George Clooney's aunt, and then this other just dreamy gal. I can't remember her name. She's lovely. <laughs> wonderful stems anyway right yeah nice just you're just trying to, if you're trying to convince us that you're not that old it's not working no i'm not trying to convince stems. but I just, i'm just wow. saying i say that when i wow. so i like your idea of a topic here i i know we haven't even talked about it yet but the idea of interview tips yeah so this came from i was watching someone in my feed today on TikTok and they got a bunch of um, questions. They own a business and they used to be like, they're, they're not like rich, but they used to be like really poor and broke. And someone had asked the question, like, I'm poor and I need a job. Like, how do I interview? Like I've, I've applied to a hundred jobs and like, I haven't gotten one. And so she just started off with like, yeah, I've, uh, for every hundred that I apply to, I get like one or two interviews. Um, and then she <laughs> went through interview tips and I'm like, oh, that might be fun to talk about. <laughs> so awesome. thank you, TikTok. <laughs> <laughs> I still think personal references is still the number one. Is I, in, in my mind, by far the best way to oh, get an you, interview. You mean oh, like you know somebody yeah. there? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Sure. Who says, "Hey, we should we should interview this person?" Yeah, it's, I mean that's kind of like a for sure. Like you can get a job without it, but when you know somebody, that's very helpful. Right. It's easier for sure. Mm -hmm. Like the first place oh. I hadn't graduated yet, and I was gonna graduate, and one of my friends was like, "Hey, I know this person. He's you know, I told him what I was going to school for. He's like, that sounds a lot like this, and I know somebody that's looking for that, and I'm like." set it up and I go in and we like hit it off and then um, as I was walking out I saw someone that I worked very closely with at the place before and um, they were like yeah everyone off and I asked him when I started I'm like hey I'm like did you care about my education he's like no I didn't care about oh. that he's like the second you left I went and talked to this guy that you knew <laughs> like, okay. yeah. yep I will definitely admit, like, when I interview someone, like, I check their LinkedIn and who they're connected with and see, do I know anyone whom they're connected with? And then I will reach out and say, hey, what was your experience working with this person? Interesting. I don't I don't think I ever look at who they're connected with. Doesn't it tell you if you, like, know somebody, though, like, when you go to their page? You have mutual connections. Yep. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Yeah. I, yeah. I, I go to LinkedIn too. It's usually just to double check that their, you know, resume matches what's on LinkedIn. <laughs> I don't personally have like a ton of stock in LinkedIn though myself. Like, I don't know. <laughs> it's like, it's like the Facebook for professionals. Mm -hmm. It's like really what it is now. And like, I'm kind of not about that. So I do have a tendency to stay off of it. <laughs> but you're on TikTok. 
I'm on TikTok because it's just swipey swipe with my thumb. <laughs> Every three minutes, sometimes less. <laughs> it's too much like Facebook and LinkedIn. That's like too much work. That's people are writing essays on LinkedIn, man. It's like it seriously is what Facebook used to be. Facebook is just trash now. <laughs> I barely go on Facebook. <laughs> We've gone from interviews off to social media critiques. Yeah, you know how you know the you know the rules. There are no rules. You know. I welcome, know. welcome, welcome to the Thunderdome. Yep. <laughs> um, another thing about like you you apply for something or pe I've heard I've heard this at, at least from people who apply, like they and they don't even get called in for an interview. I know that with large companies. Because I heard this from somebody uh, like on a recruiting team. They said, if your cover letter does not address all of the requirements for the position, like keywords. Yeah, keywords. It, it, just, it, just, gets, keywords. it just gets eliminated by machine. Yep, yep. by machine. Yep. So if, if they require a cover letter, pro tip, a cover letter should cover every single keyword of what's required for the position. I think even that's if, like, I, I think even that's if I don't even have it, like if it said, "Hey, we require you to have experience with uh, Fred's banking software," I will say, "While I do not have experience with Fred's <laughs> banking software, I have experience with Jim's bank and Jill's <laughs> bank and Frida's banking software." So there you go. So that's that I at least mention it. So I don't get kicked out by the machine. I love that pro tip. I have another pro tip. Be humble. <laughs> Do not go in thinking you know everything. Mm -hmm. Go in knowing that you have experience. And if you don't know an answer, you don't make something up. Never make something up because they can smell bullshit. At least a good interviewer smells bullshit, but you have to say, I don't have that experience, but this is what I would do in that case. And this is how I would problem solve. And this is how I would research. And this is how I would. And then that shows actually more about your personality <clears throat> than your like knowledge. So. Mm -hmm. I was going to say about the cover lever, the cover letter. Um, like in, in general, I think like, it's a lot of work. Like, I think like when you're looking for a job, like you have to put in the work, right? So it's basically, you're looking at these, I, I mean, I don't know, you can do whatever you want, but it seems like to make sure that you don't get canceled by the automated system that you have to put work into each position that you're going to apply for and, or be very good and have like, just a ton of keywords for whatever role you're looking for. Um, but like, I think it's a lot of work when people look for jobs. I don't know that everybody does that um, either. I don't know that they've had to in the job market we've had for the last like five years or so. I also feel like the younger generation who's looking for jobs does not put that much effort or work into it. And it's all about networking. It's all about social media. Who, what context do I have? Where can I get an in? So they haven't had to. Yeah. Like we're the old school. Right. So but still. But that might be smart because have you ever applied for a job in which you didn't know anybody there? You were just you were just applying cold. No. I have never had very good success with that. Not good success. Correct. Where. <laughs> I'm almost, I'm almost treated like, uh, I'm just fodder for their process at best. Mm -hmm. Like I, I know, like I can tell immediately if I, I don't even have a chance because yep. they've already made up their mind before I yep. even walked in there. There's already an internal candidate and they're just trying to go through the process of saying, oh yeah, we interviewed five people. Right. Yep. Right. For sure. And so then I get frustrated with when I hear people say, well, they're looking for 10 years of experience of this, but how am I supposed to get that experience? Or they're supposed to say, you know, we're looking for this type of experience. Like they're never giving me that opportunity. Biggest pet peeve is 
you dig, you figure it out, you find creative ways to slip in and do whatever it takes, that's how you get the foot in the door. And you can't just be like, oh, they're like poor me, victim. It's, oh, I'm going to work hard and I'm going to figure this out. And again, that's problem solving. That's grit. <laughs> that's proving that you want it. I hate it. Oh, it's my biggest you run thing. across a lot of those people? Yes. Like, <laughs> I mean, in our industry, though, like in, even in our organization, well, how am I supposed to be this when I'm not given that opportunity? Well, no one gives you shit. Sorry. <laughs> you either have to find it, find the opportunity and slip your way through and be like, ooh, I see an opening. I'm going to try to do this over here. Oh, that didn't work. Oh, I see another opening over here. I'm going to try this over here. I hear so many people. I'm not given that opportunity. Yeah. Pro tip. If you want to be a high achiever, you make it happen. So yep. you get a different opportunity and you turn it into what you want it to be. Yep, pretty much. <laughs> High achiever, over overachiever might be better. Overachiever, right? same same. <laughs> what are your so if you're being interviewed, Jess? What is um, what is like one of your tips? Um, find make it personal. Like find something to connect with on a personal level, because we're all human. And so bring up an example of your family or your friends or your dog or whatever it is that you have passion in, whatever your um, ha hobby is, bring that up as an example. And then see if they have a similar connection. I can tell you for a fact, if you bring up certain things to uh, uh, one, one, our boss, like instantly, there's gonna be like a ooh, you like that? Let's start talking which about that. Which one is it? Which which boss is that? <laughs> <laughs> we'll take that offline. <laughs> like, <laughs> you need to pivot away from that discussion. <laughs> but it's true. Like even with me, I cried in an interview with one of our peers, one of our coworkers, because when I was interviewing him, interviewing him. He brought up something that was so heartfelt and genuine and like both him and I started crying and I'm like, oh my gosh, I've, as the interviewer and as the interviewee, I've never had that experience before. And I'm like instantly, yup, <laughs> like there, you have to make a connection personally um, in order for you to make a bond with somebody. So every time I interview, I do that and I get the job. Sure. <laughs> every time. I would every also say- Every time you say... cry, you get the job? Is that what you're saying? Yeah. yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Ryan's a good harbinger for the offer. <laughs> um, I would say like, hopefully there's enough time allotted for discussion and it's Ooh. not just a barrage of questions. But when I, when I was always interviewing someone, when I got, okay, I'm done with my questions. Do you have any questions? Mm -hmm. If that person said, like the, the interview could have been going great. And if the person says, nope, I don't have any questions. Oh, yep. Uh, Red flag. Immediate bad news. Yep. Like Why? if you don't have any questions, even Why? if you, I think it's okay to have a list. Like yep. have a Absolutely. written list, bring it out and go, well, I had this question, but you answered that. But yep. like specifically, yep. I had I had this, I had this. Oh, and here's this other one. We kind of talked about it, but can you go into it further about this? Yep. I don't care what it is, but you bloody well better have questions. Otherwise, you're yep. just you're just looking to get employed somewhere. You don't even care whether it's a good fit. Mm -hmm. And you didn't put in the time or the effort to like do the research or I, like think critically about the job you're applying for. And like, there is always questions about benefits. If you don't even have a question, you ask about benefits, I don't care. <laughs> you know, if you don't have any questions, you ask about their culture. Tell me a little bit more about your culture and how do you think I'm gonna fit into that culture? You know, like you ask something <laughs> about that company. I don't care who you are. Yep, I agree. And at, in the final interview, so there's there's multiple interviews, right? Right. So like maybe the first one you may not ask 
a ton of questions, maybe the second one, but any final interview, you have to ask questions at the end. And they always, I mean, a good organization gives at least 20 to 30 minutes for questions. And if it ends early because you had no questions, not a good sign. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Ethan, you you had a <laughs> nonverbal cue that said you were you were thinking about that, whether you believed in it or not. Oh, I thought I was pretty verbal about that. Um, about, I, did, I don't think I agree with that. Okay. Well, you you think it's totally okay to not have questions? I don't think that. Um, I'm definitely not on board with if you don't have questions, you're immediately dismissed like that. And maybe you guys are wording well, it a little bit differently. I'm until, taking that to a little bit of an extreme. Yeah, that's like that's what I'm keying yeah. off of specifically. I, I would know. say I would say it hurts your chances. I would two demerits for no questions. <laughs> How far into the interview do you feel like you know whether or not you want to bring them on or move them forward or whatever, you know, wherever you're at in the hiring? Let's just oh, say move them a, forward. That's a great question. I would say I don't know for sure until the end, yeah. but I do know right away whether they're going to make the cut. I probably know within five, ten minutes. Mm -hmm whether this is just a waste of time i i know the other way like this is this is not a, a candidate but i might be like okay yep going well so far i would say that there are on rare occasions ah. i know quickly whether it's a slam dunk yep i would move forward with this person it's a it's a gradual Yep, yep, check the box. Yep, yep, looking good, looking good. Yep, 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 sweet. Yes, got any questions? Ooh. <laughs> got any questions? No, donezo. <laughs> <laughs> maybe. I'm going to put this one as a maybe. <laughs> I agree. Like, for me, I know the no's quicker than I know the yeses. So if there's a no, I know that within five to 10 minutes. And then I still try. I am like throwing so many balls for them to hit. Like, I need you to give me something and they continue to not. So it's like, okay, whatever. But like the yeses come in later. The yeses come throughout of like, okay, you answered that really well. Well, you didn't answer this, but I asked a clarifying question and you answered that well, you know, so the yeses are harder and they come more towards the end the no's come quicker and i'm just trying to get them to answer not the way i want but like the way that the culture needs the way that the organization needs that the way the, what we're looking for i want them to answer that way and it's just continues <laughs> to go bad what about you ethan it's pretty quick either way like i really? know usually within the first five minutes it's only one time out of all the interviews I've ever done where I've changed my mind um, mm. through the interview. It was like, a, a, it was a no initially too. And I'm like, yeah, no way. And then we just kept going. But I, you know, like you're saying, Jess, like I take the, the job, it's my job as an interviewer to overcome whatever potential interviewing issues they have and like yeah. really find out, you know, what this person, so like if they, you know, like I know back when you were in a different role, like there was one, he was good, but like he sucked at interviewing. Like I could tell, and I put that in the thing. I'm like, you really have to work. Like his brain's there. I'm like, but he just like, he just fumbles over his words. I don't know what it is. Yeah. <laughs> but and, so. Yeah. Well, I'm glad you stuck with me. Ethan. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> but like in our industry though, interviewing is a skill set that you need. And if you were to get more of a FTE role where you don't need to interview all the time, <laughs> like it's okay to not interview as well and have the good skills. But in our role, we're continuously interviewing. Like that is a skill set that you need. Yeah, I think like my biggest tip is like be yourself. Like, and that is not for everybody. Like, let me be clear. Like, that is. 
<laughs> that might be a hard oh. row for some people to hold. Like, that's not for everybody. Like, I'm comfortable just being myself because I do it all the time, right? But that also comes from like when I was finishing my degree, one of the capstones that I had to do is I had to go shadow. I had to do a mock interview with somebody. So I had no experience. I had only done coursework and then I had to go interview like I was interviewing at a real job mm -hmm. with somebody who did that for a living. And then I got to get feedback from them like right there, after, which was um, it was fantastic. It was such a good experience because they were like, yes, ev like what you're saying, the way you say it, it's very clear that you're genuine. I'm like, perfect. And they were like, don't put color on your resume. I'm like, got it. <laughs> <laughs> Back in the day when you had to carry a paper one with you and bring like multiple copies in your little folio. Yep. Ooh, can, do you guys care if, because we're virtual now, that the interviewee does not dress nicely and they dress in like in a sweatshirt or like a t-shirt? Like, have you ever had that recently? Or even in when it was face to face. I feel like it happens more now because we're virtual. But have you like to me that's a red flag. Yeah, I would say not not showing up with, with kind of it doesn't need to be a tux, right? No. <laughs> it doesn't even need to be a tie. Like it doesn't a even need up. to be a jacket and tie, but it should be a nice it's shirt better. and not like your crummy band t shirt. Let me rephrase that. My crummy band T-shirt, yeah. uh, thirty years ago. I don't. I don't think I would ever show up for that. I would be wearing some, but at no. least business casual. Correct. Yep. Not your screaming, it, screaming cheetah wheelies T-shirt. That's a band. Right. Right. But not even a not even a nice T-shirt. I don't care how nice of a T-shirt it is. Don't wear a T-shirt. Like, right. I don't even care if it's a $300 sweatshirt. <laughs> don't wear a sweatshirt. <laughs> like, yeah. Does not bother me at all. I don't care. Really? I've never, like, never, I've never been of the, I've had a friend that was like, he would just write people off if they didn't dress like super professional interviewing for like a retail job. Like he was working in retail and he's like, oh, they didn't come dressed up like in a suit and tie. So no he's and then he tells stories about how he gave somebody a hard time and they came back in a suit and tie and he hired them and like right. that's that's not because i'm a come as you are kind of person like that's how i like to roll right so it's like to me it's like if you can't handle me like normally like and i'm putting on a show you might not like it when like reality sets in so <laughs> interesting and i also now, i also assume everybody's either wearing shorts or pajama pants all the time <laughs> <laughs> or leggings, yeah. Or no, leggings. Like, okay. Well, that happened at the office. Like, that doesn't... <laughs> to play Ethan's advocate, okay, there is some value if they show up in their most casual, normal attire because they're probably going to give you who they really are in the interview. Yeah. As opposed to the... Everybody tries to bring their A game, right, when you're interviewing. Yeah. And... Have you ever, have you ever had an occasion where you're like, this person interviewed great, and then they turned out to just be awful? So you, uh, you don't even know how many. <laughs> really? <laughs> oh, oh, I have a, I have, at least ten, that I can say. Did you dye your hair, Jess? <gasps> I did. <laughs> <laughs> like really is it auburn it's like a purpley red or something it's Very a red dark. not purpley okay. but yeah it's red right. reddish reddish <laughs> yeah thank you for noticing i didn't even my hair's back i can't believe you even noticed that thank you <laughs> you didn't notice that i dyed mine ethan i did some grecian <laughs> formula <laughs> no i did not no now that you say that you know, because similar to Steve and I, where the end, if they don't ask questions, I deduct points. So for me, it's a pet peeve. For me, it's like you get points deducted. I don't make a decision based on it. But like, if there's a whole bunch of like pros and cons, and there's more cons, one of the cons would be didn't come prepared, dressed appropriately. You know what I mean? That would be just another con to add to the list. And I don't think like, I don't think there's any right or wrong way necessarily, right? Because it's, 
one of the fun things we got to do when we met, we went remote and we were still interviewing is we started, we got to double up and see different styles. Mm -hmm. And I got to learn how really laid back my style is compared to some other people. Mm -hmm. <laughs> They're just like diving in right away. I'm like, oh, let's just make this a conversation and we'll see, we'll see where it takes us, buddy. Like all hippie-ish. <laughs> <laughs> But that's also your personality. Yeah. <laughs> I don't, so I don't get to do the hiring. Um, I know that there are, I don't know of anybody that actually got hired that was like a bad hire. Um, and I know that there are lots of like the most recent one. It was really interesting. Cause um, I'm like, well, this dude gets it. Like he can do yeah. it, but he's junior. And I put that in the thing. I'm like, he does. If we would like to spend the time to develop him. Yes. And they were like, no, we don't want to. I'm like, yeah, perfect. Exactly. <laughs> like, and then I asked the, you know, the recruiter, I'm like, like, if I'm on the fence, do you want me to pass them or not pass them? They're like, yeah, go ahead and pass them. I'm like, perfect. okay, cool. <laughs> well, don't ask the recruiter, ask the other person who does the hiring. <laughs> Just a little pro tip there. <laughs> well, yeah, because we had the, you know, the recruiter that recruited them all. Yeah. And of that course was... they're going to say yes. That's, yeah, that's what their that their advice was like. If you're on the fence, just send them through. Let them deal with it. I'm like, I like that. <laughs> Let them deal with yeah, it. Yeah, but you know, show me a recruiter that would never say yes. Exactly. That's their job. Do they get <laughs> do they get like a commission on everybody they hire? Is that how it works? <laughs> well, recruiters. Yeah. 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 Recruiters. Like, is sure. it like a salesperson? Yeah. Yeah. Okay. That's so their I job. I look at that as a missed opportunity. <laughs> <laughs> Seriously. On the fence. No, don't pa don't send him through. I don't need any extra commission. If I didn't think that he would have done, like if, if I didn't think he did, couldn't do it, I wouldn't have put him through. It literally, like, and I put that in the thing. I was like, they're junior, but if we want to develop them, they'll be fine. Mm -hmm. And they're like, we don't want to. And I'm like, yeah, cool. <laughs> <laughs> I, re I remember I was tech interviewing just a ton of people one time. And I was not letting any of them through. I was like, no, no, no. <laughs> no, no. One guy was like, he's okay. Eh, okay, I'll let him through. And my my boss at the time, she was like, nah, I interviewed him. No. And I was like, really? Okay, I'm fine. I was kind of on the fence about him. And I hadn't let anybody through in a while. She's like, don't do that. Just not <laughs> let him through. I don't have time. I'm like, okay, got it. That, that was an eye open uh, opener for me. Like, don't let him through if you don't want him. I'm like, yeah. okay. <laughs> what's your What's your favorite question to ask? Do you have or slash do you have a unique question that you ask? I this do. is if you're the interviewee, you're being interviewed. Oh, that I'm being interviewed. That I, I, that I want should... them to ask me? Yeah, no. Oh, wait, no, what? that you that you ask them. So you're being interviewed, and okay. you guys have oh. both said, like, you have to have questions. Like, what is a go-to question of yours or a unique one? And I think we should do, like, do you have a good, like, a staple for interviewing people, too? <laughs> um, what have you done? And this is particularly effective during the pandemic, but... What have you done as an organization to improve work-life balance in the last 12 to 18 months? Dang, that's a hard one. That's a good one though. What kind of answers have you gotten during the pandemic, Steve? <laughs> <laughs> well, this one, no. No, but I think... It... Where this has come up, why I say it during the pandemic is because one of our listeners often asks me, like, hey, if I, this was a couple of years ago, like interviewing for something and, and she was like, hey, you know, what should I do? And I, and I was like, one, one, always have questions and here are a couple things. And I was just throwing <laughs> questions like this. And one of them, I said, specifically during the pandemic, it's a huge thing um, because you know, organizations are having to pivot <laughs> and do different things. So that's one of, I think that's one of my favorites is what have you done? Um, Can I tell you though, that's an easy one for the interviewer to bullshit on. 
It's a very easy one for them to blow smoke up your ass and yes. make it feel like duckies and bunnies and rainbows and butterflies. Then I always follow up with something like, and I got to remember how I phrase it. Um, always, Jess, just. Also, where in the world did blowing smoke up your ass come from? Like, is that like a thing that happened? I don't know. Like for real? Or is that like, where did that? I'm going to do research. Like, it's the bee's knees or thought. the cat's meow. Like what? Well, Steve finishes his thought. I'm going to research that. Grandpa Steve <laughs> is so one of the follow ups. And I have, to rem I have to remember how I phrased it, how, or how I phrased it. But it was something like if the, the employees that report to you what is kind of there on their radar as something they want in the, to change in the coming year? Yeah, I like that. And, and what's interesting is those two questions smoked out the BS answer that you were referring to. Because it was like, oh, yeah, we have great work-life balance. And then, like, later I asked that other question. It was like, well, you know, they're kind of tired of working these 50 to 60-hour weeks when we have these spikes. And they'd like to get back down to a reason. And I'm like, oh. So you don't have a good work-life balance. Hmm. Yeah. Okay. So. Yep. Um, for me, I would say one of my favorite questions I ask is, you know, at the end, I say, based on what you know about me and based on what you know about the position, do you see me as the right fit? what are some strengths I have and what are some weaknesses I have or some troubles that I'll have with this position. And it actually gives me an indication of like, <laughs> okay, am I going to get it or am I not? <laughs> yeah. I also have asked, what are, what are the characteristics of an employee who can succeed at this organization? Ooh, yes. Yep, for sure. And do you see those characteristics in me? Like, literally putting them on the spot is a ballsy move. That's ballsy and that's very immature of somebody to come in and ask that question. And a good interviewer may even say, no, I'm, you know, based on what I know, I am worried about this and this and this. And that's what I would say. I wouldn't blow smoke up someone's ass. I'd be like, I'm worried that you're looking for this and we're not able to provide that. Or like, I'm worried about your experience and this is what we're looking for. So, yeah. Okay. I guess, I, I, I think that's really interesting and I got to think about whether, whether I would care what their answer is or not. Because I feel like I'm interviewing them at this point. Ding, ding, ding. I don't care what your 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 answer better impress the heck out of me, because because you're trying to get you're trying to sell me on your organization. This is a two way interview. Yeah. I wanna I wanna yep. join you. I'm not desperate. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. I that's agree. Why, that's why personally, as an interviewer, I don't think it matters whether or not they have questions. But as somebody who might interview, yes, like you are interviewing that company or that person to mm -hmm. see if you want to work there too. <laughs> Ooh, another tip I have for like just looking for a job is don't look for a job when you're desperate. You're going to settle. You're going to not get, you're going to just take the first offer that comes. Like you actually look for a job when you're successful, when you're highest, when you're doing the best, when like actually when things are going well. <laughs> You don't, you don't want to be, I totally agree with that. You don't want to be leaving someplace. You want to be nope. going to someplace. Yes. Yep. That I is, agree. I've learned that and it makes a big difference in your mindset. It makes a big difference in your happiness level. And I tell a lot of people that when they ask me, like, should I quit? No, you're on the bottom right now. You should probably stay, make where you're at good, and then when you get to good, that's when you leave. <laughs> you it have sounds a lot of weird. Asking if you should quit lately, or 
What was that? You having a lot of people asking you if they should quit lately or what? Um, I have friends come to me knowing what I do. <laughs> and I have <laughs> friends asking me <laughs> about that. I have a very successful friend who's in a similar industry as ours. And she asked me that. And I'm like, no, don't leave now. You're not happy. And when you look for something, when you're not happy, you're going to settle. You're going to make the wrong decision because you're you're trying to be happy. Like, stick it out, get to that happy level, and then leave. But th and then she's like, well, what if I don't want to leave when I'm happy? Well, now you're going to go in the crazy cycle because eventually you're going to get unhappy again because it's like everything. <laughs> They're not going to change. And so... Yeah, yeah. Rose-colored <laughs> glasses. Like, yep, yep. So... Another question I will ask is, and I'm going to preface this with, I know I'm not going to get the real answer, but I'm going to get something in between that tells me. And that is, if you could change one thing about the organization over which you have no control, what would it be? Ooh. And I'm not going to get their biggest pet peeve. They're going to think about it and go, I can't say that. Instead, yeah. I'm going to settle for this one. And then I go, okay, I got to judge. That's, That's kind lower. Of, yeah. Yeah. You are so right. They would never say their biggest pet peeve. Mm -hmm. Why don't you think so? That's a really good one. What's I, that? And so I, why don't you think so? And to be fair, I've seen that actually happen in an interview where someone asked that of me and somebody else. And they were like, yeah, it's all like perfect here. And I'm like, okay, come on, man. Like... <laughs> Mm -hmm. they, they were they literally were like yeah it's totally fine there's nothing wrong <laughs> again you're the exception <laughs> I, know, I know i know that's what i've learned <laughs> yes you have learned that <laughs> yeah i think in general asking um like what what they think success looks like in that role is important and also what they think the challenges are of the role like while you're doing the interviewing of them, like you tell me like what you think is going to be difficult about this. And then how will we know that I've been successful? Um, I'm a big fan of, oops, cause I haven't interviewed in like freaking five or six years. It's ridiculous. But anyway, I like, I do like the challenge. So there's two, one of them, which is a softer challenge is, um, if you bring me on in a year's time, how will you know that I'm a good fit? Mm -hmm. Right, because now it's putting them, they have into thinking about you not only being in the role, but also doing well in mm -hmm. the role. And then my Love just that. straight up really? challenge one is, <clears throat> are there any reservations you have about bringing me on that I can answer for you right now? Mm -hmm. Those are great. Those are really good. Yes, those are perfect. What was the first one again? I forgot. I want to remember that one. <laughs> in a year's time, how will you know? If you if you bring me on in a year's time, how will you know I'm a good fit? Why a year's time? That's where I was kind of torn. Because they have to think about you being in the role and not only being in the role, but doing well in the role for a it, year. For a long period of time. Yep. Got it. Can I tell you, though? Out of all the companies I've seen, a, a majority, 80-20 rule, 80% of success is how well you fit into their culture. Like, they will support you and give you the training or the necessary mentoring you need if you're not succeeding in like a technical per perspective or in like a soft skills perspective, if you fit well in their culture, they'll give you that support. But if you don't, that's when you're not successful. And I don't know, that's where I- That's from an can FTE you? perspective specifically, because I've pointed yeah, this out but... to people like, when we go as contractors, like we're brought in because we're like hired guns like they know that we're we're good we have experience like immediately you start immediately and you start providing value like immediately ftes don't necessarily do that and then we have to Correct. work with 
FTEs and we're like, you guys are way down here. Like the bar yeah. is so low, low. but those so people low. are supported and they yeah. don't care. Yeah. <laughs> that is true. But, but I would argue that fitting into the client's culture helps you get extended. That helps you get extended. Yes. Yeah. Yeah. You can't be like a walking douchebag. But <laughs> when you, but if you look at it from the FTEP, FTE perspective, when you say you got to fit into the culture, define fit into the culture. Drink the Kool Aid. <laughs> yeah. Like the company does no wrong. Apologist for anything, any minor transgressions or slightly odd behaviors or attitudes or inconsistencies and be just okay with it and go, yeah, I'm good. There is a level of pushing the envelope that is healthy, but if you push the envelope too much, that's not fitting in. Um, I see what you're saying. So like when I was at a major corporation as an FTE, I was literally told I didn't fit their mold. <laughs> you do not fit our mold. You think backwards. You cross your legs wrong. <laughs> oh my gosh. You, when you think, you look up into the air and it makes it look as though you're not paying attention. Wow. That's interesting. <laughs> uh, I have to come back to that. Keep going. <laughs> so like... I literally didn't fit their culture. And even though I was successful as fuck, like I had so many people around me telling me like, I've done more in the three weeks that I was there than most people do in three months. Like that hurt that organization. They were like, whoa, 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 whoa. <laughs> You're making everyone else look bad. Um, yeah, there's this weird thing. If you don't do things like everybody else and outperform yes. them, it pisses them off. They do it not like that. It truly does. And I I feel like that's a human thing. It's a, a sociology of being in a group. It's an yeah, asshole thing. Defense mechanism. It yeah. just, because everybody I've ever met that's like that is just an asshole. Like, yeah. <laughs> not douche, like, just beyond that. Like, just worst of the worst kind of people. <laughs> Sorry if I'm calling out one of your friends, Jess. <laughs> <laughs> no, no. I I left that organization, so. <laughs> but, like, even as, like, if you fit into their organization, it'll just be easier for you to get things done. And it'll be easier for you to influence um, change. I don't know. It's, you know, I've the fit into the organization thing is... I mean, that's interesting to me because I'm not because I'm myself everywhere I go. So I don't change things about me. Mm -hmm. but I'm very good about building boundaries. Um, mm -hmm. Like one place I was at, they all would roll in at nine o'clock in the morning and they would leave at four. Well, I came in at eight and would leave at three. And it was like a big joke because they were like, oh, there he goes. Leave it at three. I'm like, you all know I've been here for an hour before you, though. <laughs> Yeah, exactly. <laughs> but it's like, I was the only one that did that. Nobody else ever showed up early. <laughs> mm -hmm. So yeah, it just not, not being too, not taking that stuff, like not, not caring, um, like what people think. So it's not necessarily for, for everybody. And that's it, okay. And yeah. that's what I want to tell people is that if you don't fit in, don't take it as you being a bad or you being different and you are different because you don't fit fit in but that's okay find an org organization that you do fit in because they're out there and it's just like friendships it's just like dating it's just like anything where you need to find a group of people that you um have the, a similar bond and a similar energy and a similar vibration like if you're at an organization where you're not in alignment with who they are, what they stand for, what they represent, how they're um, going about business, you got to go like you're you're going to be unhappy. You're going to make decisions based on anger. You're going to 
um, go home and be angry all the time to your family and friends, like you're just not going to be happy and that's okay. But you need to realize that you need to move on. Just move on. (laughs) Or be at peace with it. Or be at peace, but you can't. How can you be at peace when you're angry? Well, no. So that's why, yeah, be at peace with the fact that like it's different than either what you thought or it's just not what you thought it is. Because that's like, I don't, you guys might find this weird. Like I don't fit in a lot of places. (laughs) What? (laughs) Actually, I disagree, Ethan. I disagree. You do. You well, totally. yeah, so that's, um, I'm very good at, because I do like interpersonal communication so much, um, I use all those tools all the time. So it's like a game to me, which is why it's fun and interesting for so long, I think. Um, but I do, I recognize that like, one of these things is slightly different than the others and it's me. <laughs> <laughs> most places i go (laughs) how do i say this like having that one person who's different or maybe two or maybe three is beautiful like you need that but then there is the alignment with values and alignment with morals that is what i'm talking about if your morals and values are not in alignment yeah gotta go but if you are different but you're still in alignment that different is what pushes everyone to the next level it makes people think differently and yes you rock the boat and yes you get you make big waves very big waves um but if your waves are because you disagree and you don't want to do it and you're angry the intention behind it is different than the intention of doing something right and doing something because you love it. If your intention is that I don't agree and I don't want to do this and I hate this, you can feel the difference in intention. Sure. Everyone around you. Yeah. And that, that might be the difference is that I'm not mad about anything. Correct. (laughs) If you're at peace, your intention (laughs) is positive your intention is good but if you're not at peace your intention is bad and that's when you have to go people feel it people can feel your intentions if i give you a hug steve and you know me i'm a hugger (laughs) if i give you a hug and like hold you you can feel my intention but like someone next to me is going to give you a hug just because they saw me and you hug you can feel their intention of like, oh shit, I probably should give that person a hug. And it's not going to feel. It's not going to be genuine. Correct. Yes. Mm -hmm. I want to circle back to something you said where you, when you think or you talk and you're looking up and you're, (laughs) this this happened to me recently where I was doing that. And Mm -hmm. I was on a call virtually with a colleague of ours working on a very short term project. Okay. Oh. And he and I were working together and I, like, I kind of went, okay, maybe we, and I, I can't remember what happened if I stopped and I said, sorry, I'm looking up. I'm, and he go, and he stopped me and he said, no, when you look up, you are actually thinking. And, and I can't remember how he phrased it. Hmm. If it's something like it allows you to act more easily access this part of your brain when you do that. It is. And I yeah. was like, oh, I had no idea. So, yep. first to the person who criticized you, screw up. They're <laughs> morons. <laughs> yeah, exactly. <laughs> There's actually, um, when you look to the left versus when you look to the right, there's a difference in what your thoughts are. If you look to the left, uh, I can't remember. Um, you're thinking about yourself. And if you look to the right, you're thinking about others. Like if you're talking to somebody and you're like, oh, I don't know. And you're you're lit thinking about others, whereas like, oh, I don't know. And you're now thinking more about yourself. So left means it, um, me and right means others. That's a spiritual thing, by the way. <laughs> 
<laughs> so I learned that in my uh, spiritual journey is that left is you, right is others. So if you're you're hurt, like if you hurt your left thumb, it is a indication that you need to work on something for yourself. If you hurt your right thumb, it's an indication that someone you need to work with out, work something else with somebody else. And so, that's and what happens if you hurt both? Then you're fucked. No. <laughs> you're gonna die because you don't have an opposable thumb. Yeah, can't grab anything. Done. That's me. That is totally me. <laughs>